welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Good day, everyone. I am Donna, and I am here to teach you about the wisdom of microbes and how they assist us in our everyday lives, every day, all day long. You couldn't even breathe without microbes, and um, I love all the things they do, and I love cultured foods that are living foods that we eat and uh, assist our trillions of microbes that make us their home. Now, today we're going to talk about something uh, different. We're going to talk about sourdough bread, and gluten is a very hot topic. Uh, Why do so many of us struggle with gluten today? Um, There are all kinds of books and websites dedicated to gluten-free living, and rightfully so, because the bread we have today is very, very different from the bread that we ate for hundreds of years. But why is gluten intolerance an epidemic now in this day and age? Um, You know, bread is is essential to feeding so many people in, in countries all around the world. And pretty much everything has changed about the type of bread we eat. The, the wheat we produce has massive amounts of chemicals and pesticides. And also the way we harvest our wheat has changed. Years ago, they used to take the sheaths of grains from the field and wrap them in bundles and leave them till they gather, gathered them later in that week. But this allowed the sheath of the grains to sprout from the dew that was getting on the grains. And sprouting the grains unlocks the phytic acids in the grain, which is causing so much havoc on our guts. And now we have these combine machines that instantly take up the grains, never allowing them to sprout in the fields. But this is only the beginning of what has happened to, to the wheat. Before the 1950s, most bread bakeries ran two shifts of worker because the dough was fermented throughout the night with a long and slow process using a culture that contained lactobacillus bacteria. And this slow process was necessary for the bread to rise properly, to be properly digested. And in the process of this slow rise of making the breads with these cultures, these basically they're sourdough cultures, uh, the bran and the flour was broken down during this long rise and it released the nutrients that are locked up in the dough. Only when wheat gluten is properly fermented is it healthy for human consumption. And when it's not, It's potentially one of the most highly allergic foods we eat. So basically you have all of these nutrients in the flour, in the bread, but you can't, your body can't access them because they're locked up. And only through these slow fermentations that we do or through sprouting the wheat before we make bread, um, there's two different processes, using a culture or sprouting the wheat and then grinding it into flour and making bread or adding a culture to your bread and letting it rise slowly. Will that unlock those nutrients? and help diminish the, the, the problems that everybody has with gluten. In the effort and, and increased profits and to speed up the bread making process, beca- bakers began to use new techniques and it only took like three hours to make a loaf of bread because they developed these new yeast. These, they took yeast that was in bread and they supercharged it so that it would uh, rise the highest and the fastest they could. And the old ways of making bread began to diminish because they stopped using cultures. They started using instant yeast. And instant yeast is is a really hard thing for the body because it basically kind of explodes um, the bread and and fills it with all of these uh, yeast cells. But it's also very, very hard to digest. But then none of the nutrients in the bread get unlocked because the bread rises so fast that um, it never gets broken down. The phytic never go. The phytic acids in the bread never get to be diminished and unlocking the nutrients, and also the gluten becomes very intolerable for our guts. When baker's yeast was first introduced um, as an alternative to a sourdough culture in France, it was really strongly rejected because scientists at that time already knew that it would negatively impact people's health. And so a lot of the countries um, rejected it because they knew it wasn't good for people. Um, And it was interesting. I was watching, um, if you haven't watched this show on Netflix by Michael Pollan called Cooked, and he's got one on it called Air, and it's all about sourdough fermentation. I highly recommend you watch it because it's so powerful and it helps explain so many things about why this is so crucial um, in making our bread. 
because, you know, he, he had a, in, in this movie, he was talking and he had a friend say to him, if I gave you a bag of flour and water, um, and that's all you had to eat, you probably wouldn't live on that very long, but take that flour and water and turn it into bread and you could live indefinitely. And, um, even just a sourdough culture is just flour and water that you either buy or make or develop. And it really changes the bread. And that is because of the microbes that are in those cultures. The phytic acid in the grain needs to be 90% neutralized in order for the minerals to be absorbed by the human body. So when you naturally ferment or you sprout your bread or you make sourdough bread, you eliminate all those acids that are basically causing you to not absorb what you need from the bread. And about 90% of it, of the phytic acid remains in the bread when you make an instant yeast bread, when you use dry instant yeast. So unless it's sprouted or sourdough bread, which you can use to make, to make bread, um, you need a culture to a- achieve this. And this culture that is added to the bread, it's loaded with lactobacillus, and then it's risen for a very uh, slow t- period of time. And most commercial breads made in America and even some of those that are branded sourdough in those grocery stores come from a mix to bread in a matter of hours. And without that long fermentation, you may not get the same values. And microbes, it takes them time to do their work. And so, you know, we're in this hurry, hurry, hurry world. And I understand that because I feel like that too. But there is just something about um, making your own bread with a long fermentation process that just, it can change everything for you. And it, and it goes back to the way we used to make bread. These changes that we've had in our bread have been having devastating effects on our gut. It's been so hard on people. And I believe that along with overly processed foods that people are eating, soil depletion of minerals and the loss of fermentation and probiotic foods that heal and protect our bodies, our diets are just wreaking havoc on our guts. And then you add in lots of antibiotics that kill our gut bacteria and you've got um, a, a product of disaster because the body really needs these bacteria not only to make the bread, but to make our bodies function the way they need to. And this turned in events when they started using um, dry yeast, but also when they started um, processing our grain differently and putting a lot of chemicals on them and um, all kinds of pesticides. This has just wreaked havoc on the body. And our diets are such a dim reflection of the nutrient-dense whole foods we used to eat many years ago. You know, someone at my class recently asked me, uh, why are we living longer if our diets are so bad? But this is actually not the case anymore. We are not living longer. That trend has really stopped. And not only that, the quality of of people's lives is in very sad shape. And, I mean, how often do you see someone living vibrantly without sickness or ailments, um, at any age, it doesn't even have to be older. I mean, even the young people are struggling with diseases that adults have. And it's bec- increasingly become the exception and not the norm for people to be healthy. And that just shouldn't be that way. You know, like for instance, pharmaceuticals are the norm and not the exception. And food allergies and gut issues are just rampant along with a host of other health issues, diabetes, obesity, everything is just um, changing so rapidly. And the average consumer is unaware of the changes that have happened in our food supply and then labels, um, you know, gluten as the enemy. And it's really not the culprit in all of this because there's so many other factors to it. When you, when you make sourdough bread, complex carbohydrates, they're just broken down into more digestible, simple sugars. And the protein is broken down into the amino acids that we need. And this is done with a culture. Um, enzymes develop during rising and the enzymes they say are not completely lost when you bake them since the center of the loaf remains at a lower temperature than the crust. And this fermentation that happens is from the lactobacillus that allows the bread to have a lower glycemic index, thus making it better for those with blood sugar issues. And it also helps, um, restore the function of the digestive tract resulting in proper assimilation and elimination. And it just, takes away all of the stress of digestion on the body. You know, and there's been a lot of studies done on this slow sourdough fermentation, 
for many people with gluten allergies. And even they've even done some studies on celiac disease too. Although that one, you know, is celiac disease is a very um, strong allergen to wheat. And they have found that some people who had specially prepared sourdough wheat um, over a course of 60 days didn't experience um, any no, well, actually no ill effects. And um, now some people did. So it wasn't across the board. It just depends on how severe your allergies are. But it also depends on um, how damaged your gut is. My daughter, Macy, when we first started doing cultured foods, had severe allergies to gluten and wheat. And when um, I discovered that she had zero allergies to sprouted breads or to sourdough breads, um, I was shocked because it was such a contrast that, you know, it was just bread, but she could eat that and she thrived on that, but she did terrible on regular breads. Um, but what we did with my daughter, Macy was her gut was very damaged. And there's been a lot of studies done now that a lot of people who have food allergies are missing bacteria in their gut due to my antibiotics or, um, to their lifestyle diet where, uh, they're eating a lot of processed sh shoes of foods and things like that, that have, really damage their gut. And when you add back cultured foods or you add back the bacteria that's missing in the form of probiotics or in the form of cultured foods, um, it heals the gut, adds that bacteria back and the food allergies go away. And I've seen this again and again and again in my line of work that when you restore the gut, the food allergies go away. And that's what happened to my daughter, Macy. And right away, early on, she could handle the sourdough bread, but give her a regular piece of bread and she was a wreck. So it was a real eye-opening uh, thing for me because at that time there was no re research telling me why this was okay, um, why she could eat this and why she couldn't eat the other and what was going on in her gut. We gave Macy a cultured food at every meal. She had like four ounces of kombucha and she had like kefir for breakfast and she had a tablespoon of cultured vegetables for dinner and lunch. And as long as she had a cultured food with every meal, her gut started to heal and within a year, she had no food allergies and could eat anything again. Um, researchers published in Applied Environmental Microbiology discovered that when wheat bread is thoroughly fermented, gluten content drops from approximately 75,000 ppm, ppms to 12, um, a level technically considered gluten-free, which is really interesting to me. Um, and so that's why a lot of people who have gluten allergies can handle the long fermented sourdough breads. When you add the culture lactobacillus, you means there's a higher production of lactic acid, acid in the bread, which means less of the potentially dangerous phytic acids and uh, that really are hard on your gut. And it also means you're going to get more minerals available to you and easier digestion. And that's what we've seen. And I've seen that in my line of work. People write to me all the time and have found that they've done really well on this. Um, acetic acid is also created in sourdough bread, um, which inhibits the growth of mold, and it, it makes the bread last a long time. It's produced in the making of sourdough bread, so it naturally preserves itself. And I love that it's about sourdough bread because it can last a very long time in my kitchen because it's naturally preserved. Um, in sourdough bread, you're going to find B1, B6, B12, um, thiamine, niacin, uh, vitamin E, selenium, iron, manganese, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, and potassium. And only a tiny fraction of this is going to be found in regular bread that is not sprouted or sourdough or made with sourdough culture. You know, and I, I can't get over how many people come to my classes and they have so many allergies and gluten allergies. And it really depends on how severe your allergy is as to whether you can handle these breads right away. I really suggest to you that you um, try to heal your gut with cultured foods first by adding that bacteria in that perhaps you're missing and then uh, maybe trying to add these uh, foods later on. It just depends on the severity of your gut and how, how messed up it is. But uh, time and time again, people have told me that even though they had bad allergies, once they healed their gut and ate these types of breads, they did fantastic, and they, it was like so exciting to them that they have bread in their life again. Your sourdough bread, when you make it, has to be fermented for at least seven hours and um, or longer. And I have a recipe on my website at culturedfoodlife.com, and it's called Overnight Sourdough Bread. 
It is hands down my favorite recipe. It is the one that works the best and it's fermented longer because um, it goes way over, it goes, um, ferments overnight. So it can go anywhere from 10, 10 hour, eight to 10, to almost 15 hours. And it still works wonderfully well. But the longer that I let that ferment, um, the more digestible it is and the better it is for you. And so um, that's one of the secrets is it needs to be fermented for at least seven hours. And that's why it was such a big deal to make bread because they had to have two shifts of bread workers because it took so long for foods to ferment. And that's why the men wanted to develop the yeast, the dry instant yeast. Manufacturers wanted that because then they, they made more money because they didn't have to have all these bread workers. So if it's fermented for seven hours or more, it's, it's going to help it, you digest it easier. You're going to get minerals. And inside the grain, there's this amazing stuff that there's fiber, nutrients, minerals, and enzymes. And there's so many really important enzymes for us and also minerals and vitamins that we need, but we can't get it if it's not fermented properly. Now, sprouting is different. Let me explain to you what sprouting is if you... I've been talking about it, but I haven't explained it. When you sprout a grain, you take the grains, and I have this on my website if you want to uh, type in uh, how to make sprouted bread. And basically what you do is you take the grains, the wheat grains or whatever, and you put them in a bowl of water. And you let them sprout for a couple of days in water. You cover them. And you'll start to see tiny little tails coming out of the end of the wheat grain. And when you've gotten to that point, then you know that it's sprouted. That means it's unlocked the enzyme inhibitors and it's going to work really, really well for you. And so that's how you sprout a grain. And then you drain it, but then you have to dehydrate the grains, and then you have to grind them into flour. So it's a lot more of a process. Now, they're selling all kinds of sprouted flours at grocery stores now, which is so exciting to me because 16 years ago, they weren't doing that. I had to get a dehydrator and do it myself, which was fine. But um, I nowadays, you can just go buy sprouted flour. I just love that. And uh, it's, it's, I've got both processes on my website, sourdough and sprouted. And um, I, I love sourdough the best, if you want my honest opinion. I do like sprouted grains too. And I use the sprouted grains I use in a lot of things like cakes and biscuits and cookies and things like that because it's so easily available and it doesn't give you that sour taste. So I use both of them. I use the sprouted in things that I want, you know, for muffins and scones and all of those kinds of things. But for bread, I usually make sourdough because I think it's, it's, uh, works better for bread. And I'm really excited because lately, the last two months I've been making einkorn, which is the most ancient wheat there is, sourdough bread. And I developed a culture for it. And we're, I'm going to be talking about that more on my blog, on my website, but boy, do I love that bread. Now that bread takes it to new heights. Um, it's missing the protein that uh, a lot of people have problems with and gluten and the gluten is different in this bread. And, uh, it's, uh, it's more expensive to make because the flour is not as available, but you can still get it a lot of places, but boy, do I love that bread. It is fantastic. Uh, makes a fantastic sourdough bread, but it makes fantastic taste. And, uh, I think it, it actually is better for you, but we're, that's a whole other that's a whole other radio show and a blog pass. So we're, we're going to be hearing more about that. Um, it took me a couple of months to develop some my sourdough starter for it, but boy, I sure do love it. And I'll pass that on soon as I get more information about that. When, now, here's one more thing I want to tell you. When a whole grain is ground into flour, there are some nutrients that are released. So we do get some benefits from eating whole grains plain that aren't sprouted or sourdough. But all of that phytic acid that you get, you eat those whole grains that wasn't prepared possibly, it really becomes like a monster in your digestive tract. It's really hard on you. And it, it, you don't really even know what's going on. And it's that its job is to hold on to the nutrients until it's death. That's phytic acid's job. And it's how seeds protect themselves. It can fall off of a plant and only through the dew or rain will it be unlock those nutrients and allow it to grow and sprout into whatever the grain is. But this means it won't release all the fibers, nutrients, and enzymes in your body that you really desperately need. And if the grain hasn't been processed properly, it's just, it's just going to wreak havoc on you. And it's going to steal nutrients from other foods in your digestive tract. 
then you become nutrient deficient and our digestive tract starts to throw a tantum when it's got tons of phytic acid that, that's in there. And it's just no wonder that none of us can eat wheat, wheat anymore. But when you add the culture lactobacillus through a sourdough culture, and I sell a sourdough culture on my site, but you can also get them from friends. And once you have one, it lasts forever if you take care of it. I've had mine for 16 years and boy, it's just, I got it from somebody who had had it for 50 years. So it is, it's a powerful culture that can last a long time. And it's just flour and water is all it is. And when you have that um, culture, you're going to get more minerals, easier digestion. And it's just, it's just going to give you all kinds of nutrients that you otherwise wouldn't get. So, you know, there's wisdom in all this gluten pain that's going on. There's, um, you know, it's, it's an epidemic everywhere. People are struggling with it, but there's, there's understanding about it. It's not just that the gluten is bad. It's what we've done to the bread that's causing the gluten problem um, that is trying to alert us that there's something wrong. You know, whenever we have sickness or disease, you know, we always think that it's, it's a terrible thing, but it's really a warning sign. It's the body trying to get our attention that something's wrong. And if we don't know how to interpret that, then we just, we start throwing the baby out with the bathwater and trying to figure out what in the world is going on and labeling foods as bad. When so many times I've seen throughout my lifetime, it's not the food, it's what we've done to the food. And when you understand that, it gives you wisdom and understanding uh, to really change your life. It's really exciting to see uh, how much, how smart and how intelligent your body is. And the more we listen to it, the more we reap the benefits. And so when you have a warning sign, when something's going on and you're getting, you know, digestive problems, then you need to pay close attention to that. And you should uh, check out some of my podcasts and my website. And I have a wealth of information on there of you know, how bacteria, which is, which is inside of us by the trillions, uh, really controls so many areas of our life and especially our health. And I do all these podcasts because I have, I have lived this guys, you know, when you really love something and you've lived it and you continue to live it, um, the people who are looking for, for answers will find you because I believe that what you seek is seeking you. And if you're listening to my podcast, then there's some information here for you that perhaps you're needing and looking for. And when our lives, you know, teach us lessons, it's, it's so wonderful to help one another with the things that we've learned. Um, cause we're all in this together, helping each other. And this is just my piece of the world of gluten. Um, I love sourdough bread. Um, I do think you need to heal your gut if you're struggling with it but I can help you do that because it's easy to do and it's fun to do and it's enjoyable. Guys, don't spend your life struggling and giving up every food on the planet. You know, start with your gut. Just, just try healing your gut and just watch and see what happens because never in a million years did I dream that I would be an author or have a podcast for goodness sakes or videos and do this. I just never even saw that on the horizon because I didn't feel good. I felt so bad. I was just, I was just existing. I was just getting through my day. But when I felt better, everything changed for me. And all these hidden treasures that I had inside of me started to unlock because I had the energy to do it. Um, I felt good. I wanted to help others because I felt so good. And I didn't want other people to struggle and be in the darkness that I was in. And that's what these shows are about. This is what my website's about. So it's one of those things where, you know, life teaches you lessons. And when we share them with one another, we all get better. We all help each other. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this show. I hope it will help maybe unlock some of the confusion around weed and gluten. And uh, I hope if you do try sprouted or sourdough bread that you get real stuff, that you get the good stuff. Sometimes they just put the sourdough flavor in breads at the grocery stores. Or I really would love for you to make your own because there is nothing that I love better than making my own bread. It was the most difficult of the cultured foods to make because I didn't understand the process, but I have simplified it for you. And if you would like to make the most fantastic sourdough bread ever, go to my website at culturefoodlife.com and look at the recipe 
called Overnight Sourdough. It's fantastic. It'll change your life and it'll make you feel like you've done something miraculous because it's beautiful when you take it out of the oven. So you guys have a good week. I hope we see you next week. And uh, thanks for listening. And check out the articles on sourdough bread and the recipe. And I hope one day you'll make your own loaf because there's nothing more fulfilling. Have a great week, guys.